So the big question is this, how do most agents who struggle to get the information that most successful agents hoard to themselves grow and prosper without this information? That's the big question and this video cast is the answer. Welcome to Real Estate Rockstars. I'm your host, Pat Hyben. And now for the review of the day. All right, I got a good one here. A review from Michelle Lee Bollinger. Love Pat's interviewing style. He asked the questions all of us newbies want the answers to. I can't wait to pass my exam and hit the ground running. My goal is to come on this show after my first year to explain how this middle-aged Texan gal crushed her competition. I listen every day while walking my dog. Me and my dog, thank you. Keep the comments coming, guys. I love them. And remember, I eat feedback for breakfast. So give me a one-star review if you want or a five-star review if you want. I don't care. And the more reviews we get, the better guests we get. So please, subscribe first and then leave us a review or wherever you're listening. All right, Rockstar Nation, I got a great guest, a uh, great returning guest. Been a long, long time and well overdue. Uh, one of the premier real estate coaches in the industry. And what I love about this guy is when we get into stuff, we get into real specific stuff that like literally you'll be able to use the stuff from today, tomorrow on a listing appointment. So uh, get your papers and pencils ready. Uh, Mr. Brian Moses is back. Brian, welcome to Real Estate Rockstars. Pat, so great to connect with you again. It, it has been a long time. It's great to see you. Yeah, and I want all the haters to take notice here. Brian has a bombastic microphone, right? So I'm getting <laughs> blown up with you guys on these one-star reviews that the guests have shitty microphones. He went out especially because of my new notice that said you have to have a good microphone, and he got a Yeti microphone, which I know you paid big bucks for. Uh, <laughs> and it sounds great, so thank you so much. Yeah, we actually did Amazon Prime. It was delivered right to my house. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> all right, so let's get at it. Great. First of all, Brian, tell everybody about yourself. Um, you know, first and foremost, I'm a husband and a father of two. Uh, I've been in the real estate business for 30 years. I struggled early on. You know, my story is well documented in public. I got in some deep financial trouble. Um, it wasn't for lack of effort. I tried everything. You know, someone told me to do it. Frick, I did it. I mean, I would stand on a corner with a cardboard sign if they told me to do it. But I didn't know what I didn't know. And I did everything my sales managers told me to do. I managed to get up to about 40 deals a year, make a couple hundred thousand bucks in income. But I was spending 300000 to do it. So couldn't sustain that. And then my dad suggested that I um, model success. He goes, you know, success leaves clues. There are other people that are getting the results that you want. Why don't you stop doing this shit, this ridiculous, you know, wear, wearing a chicken suit and all this other promotional <laughs> crap. He goes, you look like a joker. And um, really hard conversation with my dad, you know. I was, you know, I'd go in the bowling alley and I'd sit sit down by the pins and I go pick Brian to sell your home. He's right up your alley. And I did all that crazy shit. <laughs> and it didn't work. It didn't work. <laughs> well, I imagine if you did it every day, it would have been. <laughs> so, I mean, I had. So you were an agent for how long? So I was an agent for, so that was five years. And then I found some guys that were really crushing and I just started to model their behavior, studied marketing, advertising, systems, processes, scripts, dialogues, benefits. I didn't want to be a salesperson. I wanted to be an order taker. The better the presentation, you don't have to close the little deal. They'll, they'll just buy from you. They'll just pick you. So I, I struggled for five years and then the rest was history. You know, I, I got as high as number two in the world for Caldwell Banker. Um, missed number one in the world by four deals. 417 transactions, 421 would have tied me with number one. That sucks. But hey, here we are today. It's been yeah. a great ride. 
That's right. And now you're a real estate coach, bottom line, right? <laughs> yeah. Sharing, sharing the, the clues, the things that I've uncovered with agents. And now they, it's duplicatable, right? If you can copy, if you can model, uh, it works. It works in any market. So we'll share some of those tips with you today. I really appreciate you having me back. That, that's cool. And Brian, is like, I had a kid the other day refer to me as um, old school legit. Right. Um, <laughs> and uh, Brian is old school, legit. I mean, this dude's been around. He knows he's seen everything, tried everything, done everything, been in the coaching world a long, long time and uh, 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 is a wealth of knowledge. So what we're going to talk about today, Brian, is listing appointments. We're going to talk about specific systems, specific processes, specific ways to close on listing appointments. Let's get right into it, buddy. What do you want to start with? So let's start with the psychology of a home seller, right? All right, let's they're, do it. They're generally, I have systems and processes for everything uh, mm-hmm. because it can be duplicated. It can be trained. You can build a team and have them model your process. So generally sellers, if you're doing a good job in advertising, um, we had a good share of referral business, but 400 deals a year, I don't have that many friends. So we're doing business with strangers and strangers are interviewing other people. So we wanted to create a process uh, that was intentional and purposeful. So, you know, think about it. You arrive at the seller's house, you know that they've interviewed three other agents and most agents just randomly go, hey, how, how did it go with the other agents? And what would you say, Pat? You're the seller. Yeah, um, it went great. You know, it went great with the other agents. Now let's think about that psychology. Do I, who wants to get the listing, want to reinforce that you had a good experience with other people? No. (laughs) Did it went great? Good point. Very good point. So I'm obsessed, Pat, with words and dialogues. Words have impact. So I have three questions that I ask the seller so they don't say great. That's awesome. Okay, let's write these suckers down. Go ahead. What's the first question, Brian? All right. So instead of asking how, how did it go with the other agents, I say, hey, you mentioned that you were interviewing, you know, company A, company B, company C. Um, were you able to meet with all those people? So I want to confirm that they've met with all those people. They say yes. Fantastic. Yes. Um, was there anything that those companies or those agents said, Pat, that blew you away? I mean, rocked your world, knocked your socks off. No, they were all, you know, I mean, they were all good, but they weren't, you know, I didn't, you know, so no. Nothing, nothing out of this world, huh? No. Huh, you're kidding. No. Wow. Now, do you see what I just did, gang? Yeah. So I've, without disparaging the competition, the seller should be impressed with the person that they're going to list their house with. Second question. Was there anything, Pat, that they said that upset you, disappointed you? Or, you know, outright pissed you off? <laughs> well, uh, the, the first agent didn't take any notes uh, when we walked through the house. And, You're shitting uh, me. You're no. kidding me. No, she didn't take any notes. Wow. Hmm. Now, is that a clue? Normally, I don't take notes, but you bet your bottom dollar I'm going to be taking notes on this listing. Mm. Anything um, else they said? Anything else anybody said that upset you? Just you wanted? know, the other agent, the, the one dude, he showed up and, and he walked along, uh, around the backyard first uh, without even ringing the doorbell, just, you know, taking notes. He did take notes, but he, he just walked around. And then when I wanted to show him the backyard, show him the tree fort and the, the fence and everything, um, he was like, I already saw it. And to, to me, that just really kind of annoyed me a little bit. Not a big deal. I mean, he says that's how he does it, but that was annoying. Well, Pat, I'm sorry you had that experience. So, yeah, appreciate it. Um, so now, now we're going to finish the tour. So that's the first thing that I do. Wait, wait, wait. wait. There was three questions. What's the third? Uh, let me see. Was there anything that they did that upset you that you that blew your mind? So I guess there was two. Two. I'm sorry. Okay. My, my yeah, bad. No so those are the two yeah, things. Right. That yeah, two things. So always ask those two questions. No matter always. what. Well, before you do anything, you just before sit you down and before you do anything, you're like, hey, I got two questions for you. Then we're going to tour the house. Great. Now, the, the next thing that I do strategically, and folks, I do this every single time over and over and over again, like an assembly line for taking listings. Okay. So now we get to the kitchen table where we're going to get into the, the presentation. 
The seller wants to hear price. Wait a minute. Let me let me ask you a question first. What what if they answered these questions and they and the answer was yes? They blew my mind. Like the the um, you know, they did something that blew my mind. Great. What do I do with that? Tell me about it. Tell me about it. Because I'm going to minimize it, right? So tell me about it. What was it that blew your mind that really rocked your? So here's what the agent did. So the agent said to me, "Show me the house," and then for the last five minutes of this appointment. I'm going to show it to you. And then they followed me around and recorded me, recorded them, had me record them showing them the house. Like they were showing me the house as the agent pointed out how they were going to act with a buyer. And to me, that was overwhelming. I was blown away that they would uh, put themselves on the spot like that and uh, show me their sales pitch to a buyer as okay. if I was the buyer. So that was good, man. I have to admit, Brian, I, I was quite impressed by that one. All right. Duly noted. Anything else? Nope. So there you go. One thing. One right? thing. And, and the duly noted, and, then you, and you're probably going to do that. Like you said, bet your bottom dollar that you know, before you leave, you're going to do a sales pitch song and dance and be like. Absolutely. You know, Ooh, and, gonna be, but it's going to be 15 minutes instead of five. Right. And or. You know, does that is does is that agent going to accompany every showing? Because in many markets, we do unaccompanied showings. So in right. my market, close them down, right? Be like, is are they going to accompany every showing? No. Well, I'll tell so you what, what good I'll, is it? Give yeah. me this the day I'll accompany every showing. Yeah. So or, or like you say, what good is it, right? Yeah. So you want to differentiate yourself. So, um, getting back to the kitchen table, so they want to hear the price, and if you just start going into your dog and pony show. Here's what's going to happen. They're going to they're going to get closed. They're going to go, "Hey, mm -hmm. I just want to know the price. Can you tell me what the house is worth?" Mm -hmm. So, I manage their expectations. I pre-frame the appointment. I say, "Hey, Mr. Seller, when I meet with people like you, there's generally three things that they want to focus on. One is the price. You know, the market sets the price. I don't set the price. You don't set the price. I brought some data with me that will help you see where the market is and what that price range is. And then we'll talk about how to get, the, get on the high end of the price. So because you and I don't set the price, we'll cover that last, but we will cover it, okay? All right. All right, great. The second thing is timing. Um, you know, a lot of sellers don't recognize or haven't been informed that some times are better to sell than other times. Yes. There's seasonality factors. So I brought some data with me about timing so that you can position your house to maximize the sales price because you said that. Yeah, was I was going to ask you about that. I, you know, I didn't know the exact time to put it on. And um, you know, uh, one agent said, put it on in the spring because that's when all the buyers are out. And another agent said, don't put it on in the spring because then you'll be caught up with all these other sellers putting their damn houses on in the spring. So now I'm perplexed. Right. So we'll talk about that. All right, let's do it. And then the third thing is, there is one factor that is solely responsible for getting you the best price. Mm. Do you have any idea what that is? Mm, me? You, I mean? You, it's the, the agent. agent that you select. <laughs> you know, all age, all, it's the single greatest factor because price is a function of supply and demand. And the more demand you get on your home, the better price you, you'll get. So mm. I brought some information, not, it's not even about me, it's about what your agent, whether you choose me or you choose someone else, should do to drive that price up. So how about we begin? Yeah, let's do it. All right, great. So now I'm into the benefits presentation. And generally, Pat, I have three or four things that should blow their minds, should be super impressive, um, that the other agent didn't do or didn't cover or didn't make a big deal out of it. And then I'll transition after I've done that with a, they, we call it in sales, right? I hate sales lingo, but it's really a trial close. Um, I don't say this crap that I was taught early on. Like if we can agree on a price that works for you and a commission or a fee that works for me, are you ready to get the home on the market? I don't say that crap. That's salesy. That's cheesy. So, yeah, it is. I've always thought that was salesy. Hey, real estate agents and rock stars. If you're getting value out of the content in this episode, make yeah. sure you like the video and subscribe to this channel. Also, click the little bell icon to be notified about upcoming episodes. Yeah. And I would also love it if you left a comment. 
and shared the most impactful tips and tactics you've learned from the knowledge shared in this episode, or even maybe make a suggestion requesting a topic of what you'd like to learn in future episodes. I welcome any feedback below. Now, back to the episode. And, but, you know, it's being trained in our industry today. And then well, maybe- yeah, you know what I mean? Everything starts with, you know, uh, Mike Ferry back in 1965. And then it kind of, you know, uh, there's reiterations and reiterations and reiterations of that. Sure. Um, but, and, and, but you're right. It's still being trained. Now, the question is, does it work on some level? I, I don't know. Uh, um, but, but I guess agents have to decide. Yeah. Do they want to... Um, you, you know, sound like that or not, or is it, is it in their nature? You almost have to be autonomous, uh, like a robot, like, you know, to be, to, to, to follow those things. Yeah. So, and it does work at some level, but some things work infinitely better than other things, right? So we want to, we've tested things over the years and what I'm sharing with you is, yeah, that'll work at some level, but do you want something that works a high pro- percentage of the time or something that works a low percentage of the time? So that's mm-hmm. what I, that's what I have found in my experience. Yeah, okay. So how I, how I trial close them is much softer. And I go, are you starting to see that all real estate agents aren't created equal? Mm. That there's yeah. a lot more to putting a sign in your lawn and throwing it in the MLS. Okay, so that, now, okay, yeah. Are you starting to see that? And the answer is, uh, yeah, I am. Yeah, because I've done a good job in my benefit. If you do a good job in your benefits presentation, they say that. Mm -hmm. So then I say, Pat, are you comfortable with my skills and qualifications or would you like to hear more? Okay, hold on. Are you comfortable with my skills and qualifications or would you like to hear more? Um, And and of course, I I think they're going to say no, because at that point they've interviewed four agents. They just want to get you to hell out, you know, or, or, or sign with you. So yeah, you'd be surprised. Unless they have a specific question about, well, you know, uh, Frank Rutherford said mm, he was, He was the number one agent for husband and wife teams that um, are, uh, you know, at a satellite location in this county of this zip code. He was number one. Right. Yeah, fantastic. So compared to Frank Rutherford, how do you feel about my skills and qualifications? Um. Yeah, it's it's equal. It's definitely equal or better. You know, it's hard to tell, but yeah. Let me show you a couple more. So then I'm going to show a couple more. So I'll give you some examples of a couple of benefits that we use. Um, And I'll give for you know you have a huge following, Pat. So you have superstar producers following you, listening to your podcast, and you have entry level real estate agents, I presume. So I'll give I'll give you a couple. If um, if you're doing a lot of business and you've got a lot of leads, print out a report of all of your leads and go, this is a printout of the active buyers that we're currently working. There's, you know, 372 that we received last month. Um, price being a function of supply and demand, can you see the advantage of picking an agent? Again, whether you pick me, or you pick Frank Rutherford, or you pick someone else, that they market that they've already done a job of attracting buyers in your town and in your price range. Can you see the advantage of that? Yeah, sure. If we were to do something together, would it be okay for me to let all 376 of these buyers know that your home's for sale? Of course, yeah. Awesome, right? Now, did Frank or did the other agents you meet with show you a list of the buyers that they're actively working with? Nah, they just said that they have these systems and processes that, that you know, are ton. They didn't... They didn't show me the names and numbers. Yeah, well, the show me is more powerful than tell you. I would expect that they would tell you they had a lot of buyers, but if they did, don't you think they'd show you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah, they, so, that, that would be putting their money where their mouth is for sure. Another one that we use is I print out a QuickBooks printout of my book from my bookkeeper, and it's the advertising expense. Now, at the, he- at the height of our business, Pat, we were spending $70,000 a month in marketing. 70 grand. We were yeah, every. Well that, I mean, that's great if you're a big team, but what if you're a brand new agent? Well, so you can show a buyer list. You could use professional photography. So let's, let's use, let me give you one that everybody can use. Or you could get your broker's advertising budget, right? So, hey, at Century 21, at Caldwell Banker, this is what our company spends monthly in marketing and advertising. Um, but professional photography, hey, Pat, so Mr. Seller, 
You know, have you ever bought anything online? Amazon Prime, eBay? Yeah. Oh, yeah. If it doesn't have a photo, mm. how likely are you to buy it? Nah, I ain't doing it. Okay, so, and if it has a crappy photo, how likely are you to buy it? I'm not. All right, so I'm going to have two sheets that I've pre-printed out. This is collateral for a listing sheet. And one is going to be an MLS listing sheet with no photo. And I'm going to black out the name of the agent and the company. And I'm yeah. going to go, you're not going to believe this. But you may even know this agent. I've, in, I've blacked it out because I would never say anything disparaging about a competitor. But you probably know who this agent is. Can you believe it? They're submitting a listing with no photo. Here's another one. I've also blacked out the name. And I think you know this person too. Look at this picture taken through the car window with a cell phone. Mm. So price, every detail, everything matters. Whether you work with me, work with someone else, it's imperative that you utilize somebody who has a professional photographer. Our company, we have 32 pictures, all professionally uh, photographed by a, you know, a certified photographer. Really, really incredible. They're award-winning. We have a drone that will do for your property. So those are some little things that you can do to differentiate. But you want to have five in the, in the can to blow the seller away. And then now it's time to get to price. So I say, is it okay if we move on to price now? Yeah. I, yeah, of yeah. Course. I don't tell them. This is another great distinction, Pat. You know, I used to, looking back on my career, I remember used to doing presentations and I did all the talking. It's far more effective when you're engaging, when you're going back and forth, kind of like this interview, right? You're talking, I'm talking, you're asking questions. You want to do that with your seller. You don't want to just do a presentation. You want to engage them. So I say, is it okay if we move on to price now? Get their involvement, get them engaged. And they go, yeah. Now, one of the things that we do is we don't give them the price. I don't tell the seller what their home is worth. I know what their home is worth based on recent sold data, right? Wait, 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 wait. You don't give them the price. Like, do you give them a range? I mean, I let, the, so I get them to give me the price. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. So let's, can we role play this? Mm -hmm. All right, let's, sure. Let's, so, so yes, let's get the price, Brian. All right, so before we get into the recent sale data that I brought with me, I want to give you a disclaimer, Pat. Please. No two, no two homes are identical. Mm -hmm. Hey, some homes are bigger, some homes are smaller. If a home is smaller or older than yours, is it worth more or less than your home? If a home is smaller, is it, well, it's probably worth less. You're a smart guy. So this is how I engage the seller and I simplify pricing. All right. What else do you say besides like, like, uh, is, 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 and so if a home is bigger, newer, mm -hmm. has more amenities, you know, has a three car garage, you don't have a garage or a two car garage. Is it worth less or more than your home? More. Right. So it's very, very simple to come up with pricing. Yeah, so, yeah I, get, I get it. And it makes them think and use their brain, right? Yeah. And then I'm going to show them recent sales and I'm going to take a blank sheet of paper mm -hmm. and I'm going to write. So I'm going to write their subject property on the top. And the reason I write their subject property, so I write their address, Pat. I write bedrooms, baths, square footage, lot size, property taxes, age of the house. So I write mm -hmm. that across. And then I go, so, Pat, you've got three bedrooms, two baths, two-car garage, built in 1997, um, 2,700 square feet, and the taxes are $6,200 a year. Is that correct? Yes. Now, the reason I do that, gang, is because I don't want them thinking about their granite countertops. I don't want them thinking about their upgraded appliances. I don't want them thinking about, you know, the super glue tongue, you know, tongue and groove uh, plywood that's underneath the linoleum. <laughs> so I'm controlling their focus. This is a psychology play. It's very, very effective. Yes. So now they're focused on that because what you focus on, you, you experience. So then I go, okay, the first one. So I'm going to pick ideally five comps. And the first one, Pat, my goal is to actually piss you off. Get really? Yeah. Wait a minute. Just to, just to, just to wake me up to get my attention. 
Well, because you're never going to like my, you're never going to like the market price. Everybody. Okay, so, so what do you do? You find a how? Okay, so, so tell me how you do this. How do you piss off the seller on purpose and why? Yeah. Right. So I piss them off so that because it's going to get better. Okay. And as it gets better, kind of like with buyers, you show them a crappy house first, and then yeah. the last house or the second, the last house you show them is the absolute best house. Uh, I, I, you know, a lot of people say this: you show them the absolute best house second to last, and then you show them a, a shitty house again for the last house, so they know that it doesn't keep getting better and better. Right. <laughs> and they go, "Oh no, we we like the second to last one." So this is what you're doing: you're doing the same sales psychology uh, right. with the seller. You're showing them a shitty one first. Now, and watch this. So let's say that I want to list your home at 400000 All right. The first sale might be three twenty-five. So I, I show you the MLS sheet and I, I so just- you, you Generally, you find a foreclosure or something, right? That they're not gonna, even- wait, a wait a minute, that house was terrible. Not a foreclosure. It's probably significantly smaller, maybe even older, but it's still a comp. It's in the neighborhood, right? It's I want- So you show, yeah. okay, you show them the worst comp. Yeah, so I show the worst comp and I go, you know, here's one that recently sold and the seller gets pissed off, right? If you know you're doing a good job if they go, I had to throw you out on your ass, Brian. Yeah. Then I go, time out. Remember what I said? And I refer back to the disclaimer. Remember what I said, Pat? Some homes are bigger. Some homes are smaller. This home is significantly smaller than your home. I'm not suggesting that your home is worth 325, but it recently sold down the street. I'm just the messenger. Yeah, you need to know. Is it okay if we it's move on to the next one? Okay. Sellers yeah. like, please. So we yeah. move on to the next one, 350. Mm. Three, the next one, 375. So that's how you do. You go, gradually, you keep getting, you keep getting better comp, better comp, better comp. Right. Till we get to four hundred. Mm -hmm. Now the one at four hundred is very, very similar to your house. Mm. So now the seller sees five prices written down. Let me just do it real quick. So three twenty. So you're, so you're actually pulling out the comp, going over the MLS. You're circling bedrooms, bathrooms, finished basement. You know whatever you want to do. Um, right. So I don't know if you can see that. So yep, I it actually, says, guys, it says three twenty five, three fifty, three seventy five, three eighty, three ninety, four o five. So then I simply say, and I write it down just like this on a white sheet of paper, mm -hmm. and I go, Pat, based on recent sales and looking at the market, where do you feel the top of the market is? Where do I feel the top of the market is? Well, the top of the market is four o five. You're a sharp guy. I wish everybody was as smart as you. This is, you're making my job easy. Now I've gotten the seller to tell me the price because if I tell them the price, they tend to doubt me. If yeah. they tell me the price, that's, that's gospel truth. Okay. So, so, so they say the top of the market is 405. Now, how do you take that statement, the top of the market is 405, and how do you get it priced at 399.9? Yeah, so let's go to the net sheet. All right. So, so the next step in my process is let's see what 405 means to you. Okay. Okay. Let's see what that means to you. So I, I do it and I go, you know, let's just do it at 400. Let's be conservative. Okay, Pat. So yep. that's how I would do it. So I write 400 on the net sheet and then I go, Pat, what do you think your biggest expense is when selling your house? The biggest is, is this your commission, Brian. I wish. You told me on the phone that you owe $280,000 to Bank of America. True. So I make Bank of America the bad guy. That's true. They're gonna the, big, the biggest expense yeah, is, our, is our loan. Yeah. So my full commission, mm -hmm. and you know, I don't want to talk about commissions here, but I charge more than anybody else in the market. What the? It, it pales in comparison. Get out. <laughs> I'm just teasing. Okay. So, no, I'm telling you and the listeners, right? So I'm not going to tell the, the right. seller. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I thought you said that. You said that to the seller. I was no, like, no. Quicker and quick. Okay, keep going. All right, so 280. Okay, so at 400, your real estate fees are going to be, and I take a calculator, my phone, and I type in the sales price times my, my commission. Mm-hmm. And I write that number down and then we charge a transaction fee for our team. You know, that we have somebody dot the I's, cross the T's. So that's 995. 
Then we have transfer taxes in the state of New Hampshire, which are seven dollars and fifty cents per thousand. Um, home inspections, we have the buyer pay. So on, on home inspections, I write, we have the, the buyer pays. And I've had, I've had people go, honey, did you hear that? They make the buyer pay. Now that's customary, folks. Sure, right. But the sellers don't know what's normal. Right, and the, the, buyer, last, the buyer pays a lot, you know. Yeah, and the last agent in didn't go through all of this important detail. Yeah. The seller needs to know what they're walking away with. So I go through all the expenses and then I say, hang on a second. And I punch my calculator and sometimes my fat fingers screw up and I have to hit clear and do it again. And that silence is gold. They're waiting for, it's like a drum roll. Could you give me a drum roll to see what I'm going to have left after I sell? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very important. So then I go, you're going to walk away with Whatever the, whatever the number is. Yeah, yeah. Will that work grand. for you? Let's say 100 gram. Yeah, will that work for you? What do you think about the word toolbox? What is a toolbox? A toolbox is a box full of tools that you use to build something great. At Real Estate Rockstars, we've created our own free toolbox. So everybody that comes on the show as a guest brings a tool with them and we plow them all into this toolbox and we give it away for our viewing audience to basically use as they wish. Everything we put in there is an actionable item that can be downloaded, can be printed, can be used immediately. And we got things like scripts and dialogues, checklists for teams, checklists to keep agents accountable, referral forms that are filled out at settlement to get referrals by your buyers and sellers. Everything you could think of that you could use on a regular basis about real estate is included in this toolbox and it's helping agents worldwide sell more houses and make their jobs a lot easier and processes much more efficient and the thing is it's absolutely free all you got to do is go to hybendigital.com backslash toolbox or text the word toolbox to 444-999 that's toolbox 444-999 do it now. Hey, real estate agents and rock stars. If you're getting value out of the content in this episode, make yeah. sure you like the video and subscribe to this channel. Also, click the little bell icon to be notified about upcoming episodes. Yeah. And I would also love it if you left a comment and shared the most impactful tips and tactics you've learned from the knowledge shared in this episode or even maybe make a suggestion requesting a topic of what you'd like to learn in future episodes. I welcome any feedback below. Now, back to the episode. Um, yeah, actually, you know, a hunt that, that was the clean number. Um, 110 would be nice, but I, I won't take a penny less than 100 grand because that's, that's my number. I understand. And my job is to create a bidding, create so much demand, we have a bidding war on your home. Have you ever heard of property selling for more than the asking price? Yeah, I thought that happened in California, not New Hampshire, though. It does. It does. If we have more people interested in your house, it's possible. I don't want you to bank on it, but that's my goal. Okay. Sound good? Yeah, absolutely. Of course. So when I say, when that's just like sound good, they're going with me. But right? don't, yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we're rolling, we're dancing together. Okay. So I go, all right, fantastic. Um, is, is it okay if I have my photographer come by? Um, are there any days that aren't good for you? Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a minute. We, 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 you know, we got another, another chick coming tomorrow morning and, uh, and then uh, Sally and I need to talk. That won't happen. So I wouldn't have gone this far, Pat. When I first walked through the house, you remember I said, did you meet with everybody? You told me no, yes. Yeah, okay. So you always... You you, you, you want to go last. Right? I want to go last. You always want to go last. And a lot of people say, no, nah, I want to go first because I don't want someone to come up and snake it from me before I get there. But you're, you're the opposite. You say, I want to go last. Why do you want to go last? Because if you're last, you don't even need to be any better than anyone else to get the listing. True. And I have a process to prevent someone from snaking it from me. 
Uh, They're going to, so when we're qualifying the appointment on the phone and I'm getting, so let's back up. Yeah, let's do that because, um, you know, there's a lot of controversy over whether you should go first, last, whatever. You know, the one benefit to the last thing is they, they forget, even though they might have met the people yesterday or Tuesday, the way, the way our minds and there's so much stuff going on in today's society, they forget. They're like, oh, crap. I, you know, I don't know what they said, what commission was there. I got to look it up. It's written down. I don't remember. You know, uh, you know, I used to use listing, lose listings to people just because because uh, I wasn't last because the last person was good enough. You know what I mean? And they were just tired. So here's how what I would tell people. Um, I personally listed over 100 homes a year. Mm-hmm. Um, at our height, we did like 250, 275, 275 okay. listings a year. Mm. If someone's telling you to go first, Ask them how many homes they sold. If they're selling more and they've got a good process, follow it. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, Let's role play this real quick, Brian. Sure. um, Yeah, so Brian, uh, can you come over Saturday at 5? Saturday at 5, that should work. Let me just look at my calendar. Uh, While my calendar's pulling up on my computer, let me ask you, are you guys talking with anyone else? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're getting a four agent, uh, four agent shuffle here. I'm trying to fit them all in. Love it. Have you already scheduled them? Mm, yeah, I got one guy um, that's tentative and I got two that are, are booked. Okay. And when are you, I'd like to, I'd like to come last, Pat, if that's okay. Somebody's got to be last. I'd like that to be me. And here's why. I want to show you everything we do over and above the people you meet to get you the best price for your home. If you meet with everybody else, it'll really stand out and make a difference. If we go first, it won't, it, it won't make as much of an impact for you. So when do you think you'll meet with the last, four, the last third agent? Uh, the other lady's talking about Sunday. So you okay. know, we should buy, by the end of this weekend, we're going to be done for sure. All right. Well, uh, what time on Sunday? It would, be, it would be around 1230 is what she wants. Could I come, in, could I come after that? Say two, three o'clock? Yeah. Yep. Great. Now, Pat, I have a huge favor to ask. Okay. These three agents that you're going to meet with, they're going to do everything in their power to get you to sign on the dotted line. I'm going to start doing some preparation. I'm going to do a really great job for you. I'm going to show you a lot of ways that you're going to increase your value on your own so that you get all the meat off the bone and get all the money off the table. All I ask is that you don't make a commitment to anyone until you meet with me because then all the work that I've done will go for naught. Will you at least do that? Hear me out. Um, well, yeah, that's a good point. You know, um, I didn't know you were going to do a bunch of work. I thought you were just going to show up and you know, do your sales pitch. No, I'm going to research the market. I'm going to look up what's, when's the best time to sell. Do you know that there's different factors that influence the price that you get? What, what do you mean? Well, seasonality. Right, um, price is driven by supply and demand. So, if there was a better time to sell to get more money off the table, would you want to know about that? Yeah, sure, absolutely. So, I'm going to do that type of market research. We're going to look at other properties in the area that have recently sold, so that I can get you the best best price for your house. We're also going to put together some some marketing a marketing plan uh, specifically for your home in your neighborhood. Okay. So, yeah, we got quite a bit of work to do in advance, and I'll see you Sunday at did we say four o'clock? Yeah, Sunday. Yeah, Sunday four works. That's fine. Great. Now, Pat and listeners, nothing is a hundred percent. I'm not going to stand here and lie to you and tell you I've never been snaked out. Yeah, sure. Rarely have I been snaked. It's not frequent. So this process works a high percentage of the time. High ninety mm. percent of the time, I don't get screwed. I don't get beaten. Um, and that's why I go with it. So you know, I have gone first. I've done it both ways. I've gone first and they go, hey, I got Susie coming in. I'm gonna, I want to hear what she has to say. And now I'm playing follow-up. I want to position myself so that I can get the listing when I'm over there on Sunday afternoon. Okay, yeah. Makes sense, makes sense. Yeah, and I like it. And I like how you tell them, hey, hey you know, I am going to do a lot of work and, and you throw some guilt in there so that if they cancel, you know, that, um, that they do feel guilty about that and, and you know, it doesn't, uh, you know, but any, yeah. anyway, that all makes well, let's sense. Let's face it. This is an important decision and they want to get all the money off the table. So whether you list the house Friday or you list the house Sunday or even Monday, 
It doesn't make a difference. But what does make a difference is the agent that you select. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to knock your socks off, Mr. Seller. I'm going to show you some strategies. There's over a, a hundred variables involved in a real estate transaction. And you want to make sure that the person that you hire, whether it's me or someone else, right? So there's no pressure with me. I'm informative. Whether you hire me or someone else, you want to make sure they're equipped to manage all those variables. And I'm going to be prepared to share a good, a several examples with you when I come over on Sunday. No, I can't wait to see him, Brian. Great. I can't wait to meet you. <laughs> yeah, and see your awesome house. Mm. So um, uh, let's talk about your free gift, Brian, because this, this has been uh, absolutely uh, phenomenal. And I, I appreciate you sharing a specific. Some people on the show, they come on the show and it's just all this, you know, air, airy type stuff that, uh, that, that's not specific. And I'm a specific guy, so I appreciate you give exact things, you know, and you've done that well. Um, so we're talking about specifics, and I know you're going to give a, a great uh, – your free gifts are, are incredible and very, very specific. Can you elaborate on? My team sent you – I'm not even sure what they sent you, Pat. I think it's, uh, it's a listing download. It's a recording, a coaching tr session of me going through step by step some more specifics and some more examples and some more strategies to help them work less and make more money, right? When I say work less, some people go on 10 appointments to get two listings. Let's, let's, not go on, let's not work that hard to get two listings. Let's go on 10 appointments and get nine listings. So these little tidbits, these little nuggets that I've developed over the years and put into a process, we're gonna share them with your listeners. Okay. Yeah. And I think there's some stuff to download as well on there. Um, other than the video, I think there was a piece of paper, uh, with that as well, if I recall, right. But, uh, Systems, but, systems and processes. Yes. Yeah. yeah like a checklist. Yeah. Yeah. Checklist. Yeah. 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 If not, make sure you make sure you have them send that over. Cause I like things that people can, you know, use and yeah, items. we gave you we gave you an audio and we gave you a download for okay, sure. Okay, good, 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 good. Um, so, guys, I'm going to put that on HeidmanDigital.com backslash Brian Moses two, uh, Brian Moses M O S E S. This is your second time on, right, Brian? Yes. Yeah, Brian Moses M O S E S two. HeidmanDigital.com backslash Brian Moses two. I'm also going to put all of his stuff in the Agent Success Toolbox, which can be found on HeidmanDigital.com backslash toolbox, or simply text the word toolbox to 444-999. Brian, this has been a blast, buddy. I appreciate you coming on. So succinct, so fast, so uh, top-notch stuff. I appreciate you, Pat. It's great. Uh, you know, maybe the listeners can follow us on social media. We're always posting stuff there. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. So uh, LinkedIn. I'll put all that. I'm going to put all that on Brian's show notes too. Awesome. I'm also going to put his website and his email. If you want to reach out to him and great. find out about his uh, coaching uh, systems and, and that sort of thing, it'll all be there. Awesome. Pat, such a pleasure. I appreciate you as always. Keep adding value. You're doing an amazing thing for, for our industry and I appreciate being a part of it. All right. My pleasure. All right. Take care, buddy. Rockstar Nation, thank you for listening to Real Estate Rockstars. Listen, I need a favor. If you find this free content helpful, if you find our downloadable items from each guest helpful, please, I need you to pull out your pointing finger. Yes, the one finger that points at people and hit subscribe. Yes, subscribe. The more subscribers we get, the better we look in the ratings and the easier it is to get guests like Robert Kiyosaki, Barbara Corcoran, all the players that are on million dollar listing in the different cities. All that stuff makes it easier the more subscribers we get. So please subscribe. And listen, there's a lot of places you can leave comments. There's a lot of places you can like. We're on Facebook. We have an Instagram page. Instagram page is I am Pat Hyben. The Facebook is Real Estate Rockstars Radio. Feel free to leave us comments there. The most popular form of commenting seems to happen on YouTube. Yes, for whatever reason, it's a, a very open environment. So just go to YouTube and go to Real Estate Rockstars Radio. Leave us comments there. Some of them we will read on the show. We love your feedback. So thanks, guys, and I hope you are having a great day. Oh, and also, listen, if you're going to subscribe and you haven't already left a review on iTunes, please do that too. Have a great day and thanks so much, Rockstar Nation. I really appreciate you.